Well, I bought this for 60 bucks today. He was selling it for 100 and I was good for 100 Uh And he said it ran. And when I saw it run, I was like, yeah, 60. <laughs> it's got a nice Kohler Command Pro 16 and a half. It does run. Uh, it was smoking like crazy. There's a lot of oil in that muffler. So I don't know what's going on with that. But just smelled like pure burnt oil. I'll try to get it off the trailer here, but um, we got a lot of tire problems. Front ones hold air for a half second. No hope for the rears. And uh, I do have a deck for this attached let me show you so yeah one of these uh, nice with the front rollers don't mind all the fireworks it's sitting on top of that's fine right um, but this should probably shape up fine spindles seem like they're a little bit seized so we gotta be cautious about that just to make sure those are still good but um yeah lots of lots of mouse nest evidence we're gonna have our hands full with this i mean this could easily be oh, oh it is a hydro so that's nice um this could easily be a parts machine or i could just take this engine off and put it on another thing you know it's, it's gonna be hard for me to make this thing look really nice so it could just be a, a, a simple cheap mower I don't know what's up with all these like ATV tires. I don't know, he just kind of gave them to me. So I think I might just put them on Marketplace now. I don't know. This, Those are tractor tires, I guess. These are ATV. They're like the small ones though. They're even, they're smaller than this. So I don't know. I don't know why I took them, but I did. That's how it goes, right? Okay, so let me see if I can uh, push this thing down off the ramps by myself. But uh, yeah, another mower. These tires are just too impossible to deal with, so I gotta get this. Uh, gotta get these off. burn it but just loosen that up a bit there we go gotta get this C clip off uh, I got these but I need a flathead screwdriver don't lose it Hopefully that will come off pretty easy. Save all that stuff. Alright. So hopefully this is the one with the keyway. Yeah. Alright. So these are... There should be a... Little keyway in there that I gotta grab and I'll need for the new set. All right, we got rear tires on and in about the 15 minutes it took me to do that job, this front tire went flat already. So those are in pretty rough shape. Okay, we're gonna try to get this thing running in one shot. Uh, got a jumper pack on and we have to bridge the gap on the solenoid, but let's see if it runs. You'll see how much it smokes.
want to check the oil level so I just shut it down but it it's just spraying the muffler guard with oil so he did say that this was it sat overfilled with you know the the engine was overfilled with uh, gas and oil you know so he drained that out so I'm gonna do a double check on the oil because he said he filled some oil back in there so hopefully there's some oil in there but yeah so this was supposed to be a hundred dollar machine <laughs> I said uh, you know I definitely want to see it run and I want to see if the hydro trans engages and he's like yeah 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 we'll do that it runs good and this is what it was doing when I got there so I was like yeah this isn't really running good <laughs> he's like 50 bucks he's like oh, how about 60 okay all right I'm gonna check the oil and then we'll see if we can drive this thing around okay I topped off the oil I filled up the front right tire for the third time <laughs> let's start this thing turn the key on Wants choke.
considered not too bad, right? I mean, he definitely didn't sell me a lemon. I think it was, I think I got what I paid for, but this could turn into something. Gotta really clear out this mouse nest. It looks like smoke is coming out from the, uh, the air guides, but uh, not from the muffler anymore. All right, one thing I like about this Kohler is uh, it doesn't have the fuel pump, and that fuel pump, as you know, always goes bad. So this is set up gravity style, just straight into the carb, and that's so much more reliable. So this has the front mounted gas tank. Yeah. Some of this plastic I should be able to either paint or maybe do the, the torch trick and make that look a little bit better. But yeah, this, I mean, it, this green color, right? <laughs> it's so classic, but man, it doesn't really look good. But there's definitely a lot you can do. Like you could paint all this stuff. I don't have to worry so much about these instructions to the turtle and the rabbit like people know that sort of stuff you know even it's already faded like I don't have to worry about it I just paint all that black okay all right decent purchase this uh, as you can see a couple machines here this one this one not this one's mine and then this one that's gonna be a big restoration hopefully if I can get that engine running I might drop a new engine in there, but uh, this hopefully won't take too much, but I haven't seen it run yet. And then this thing, you know, just needs love, but we're already off to a good start. All right. We'll see you next You'll never guess, but it's been over nine months since I've revisited this project. <laughs> I just reviewed my footage. I edited about 20 minutes worth of stuff from the first day that I got it. And I have not been back to it. Main reason was I had a lot of tractors parked in front of it or behind it, however you want to see it. I had to get to all of them before I could get to this one. So yeah, we're down to uh, this one, which sort of runs okay, but needs some steering issues, probably a carb clean and steering issues. Uh, this is a blown engine, probably just going to be a parts tractor. This one I got not too long ago, and this should run, but it needs a compression release. So I have the camshaft and the whole kit for that, and I'll do a specific video about repairing that common problem, replacing the cam. So anyway, that's what I'm down to down here by the creek. Um, I just filled these tires with air because most of the footage has been about the tires, so you didn't need to watch that. Uh, it, I robbed this thing at one point of its voltage rectifier, and so I had this one on the bench, which either means it's a good one or it's a bad one. <laughs> so we're going to throw that on the engine and uh, see if we can get this thing to fire off for you guys. to run but it doesn't have any fuel it's not getting any fuel there we go now the solenoid's clicking all right let's try that again
a hundred places we could start on this thing, but I'm gonna start with getting the solenoid off here. That way we can start using the key. There we go. Let's see if we can go find a four post. I do have a brand new solenoid, but this is a three post. Now, we can make this work if we have to. But I have a used four post. So I think we'll try this first. If it works, we'll call it fixed. If this is a bad solenoid, we'll try to adapt the three post. this in a minute but there's about an inch and a half of water in this battery box For whatever reason it just doesn't drain so I left the solenoid loose it doesn't need to be mounted with if it's a four post just save us a little time if we have to undo that if it doesn't work here in the fuel solenoid click but that might be a bad solenoid so here's the new three post that I'm using. So it has a little tab where you can connect the ignition wire to that. Then obviously you're gonna have your battery cable, your starter cable, and then you need your ground. And for a three post, you need to ground this uh, to the to the ground of the machine like any metal bare metal and it also has to touch you know the solenoid then because this one was wired for a four post it has a wire connector that is a ground so i'm just going to connect it to that ground and then connect it to the side and the metal of the lawn tractor so that's how we're adapting this and it should work just fine give this another try Maybe we've been barking up the wrong tree. Blown fuse, maybe? Just messing around here. I had to unplug that seat safety in order to get this thing to spin over. So usually it's not the seat safety then that's the issue. Maybe the brake safety, but in any case, it works now. See if we can get it to fire off. I think we're going to be uh, redoing all these fuel lines. They don't look great. Even the tank doesn't look great. I'll figure that all out in a second here. acting like the fuel solenoid isn't clicking. Yeah, see, it's working with this. So uh, let me just loop those two. Let's see if this does it. You can hear the solenoid now. You probably can't. Now it doesn't crank. Does that make any sense? It's the real problem here, guys. That one's got me a little baffled. Crud in that brake safety. I'm going to clean that out. Well, you know, one of the tabs is broken. Let's see if I can bring you in to show you. 
I think it's the brake safety that's broken. I know GoPros don't focus well, but this bottom left quadrant here, the tab from the brake safety is actually broken off in there. So this is the female side and like one of those tabs, the male connector is actually stuck in there. All right, so I got to figure out how to bypass this brake safety. I really don't know how, to be honest, but you probably just need to loop two together. That's my guess. So we'll just try some things out. Okay, I figured it out. Trial and error. Trying out a bunch of other dangerous combinations. All right, but if, if from top left to right, it goes one, two, and then you're at the bottom row, three, four, you connect one to three and two to four. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. But if you do that, and I'm gonna obviously have to make that more permanent, then you get crank, and not just permanent crank, because I had it one way where if you turn the key to the lights where the solenoid clicks, I was cranking in this that position and it was the starter was continuing to spin while the engine was running. But this is don't need any brakes, but yeah, this is correct now. Okay, maybe not. It did just work a second ago. Yeah, it's just those wires and that harness. I have to make a permanent connection there or splice them together. <sighs> they shake loose. All right, let me uh, see if I can figure out a more permanent situation down there. It's been another month or two since I've touched this thing, but you know, gotta get back to it. It's running now, go figure. I don't know, whatever wire connections I made, splices, whatever I did last time, it's working. Key switch works. Um, yeah, so I just tidied up the wires so that they stay where they are. And uh, I hope that's gonna solve the start issue. So engine sounds pretty good. Muffler maybe is a little loud. This is going to be a total beater tractor, I think. Um, you know, I think it'll look somewhat decent when we're done. You know, it's got a nice seat. No, like, rust or anything like that. But, I don't know. I'm not going to go too crazy with this one. I'm going to try to just get a mid-summer, late-summer tractor sold here. So, um... We have to address the tires. They are not holding air. Um, there's some real big dry rot. And um, you know we could try some ATF. I'm not sure if we did any of that previously. I don't think we did. So we could do that. We could do some um, fix a flat. I don't know if I have too many other options for tires. I'll look around because I do have a couple parts tractors at the moment. So maybe we can uh, steal some. But yeah, as far as engine work, I think we're good. Um, we need to work on the deck, so let's make sure this thing drives around well enough, and then uh, we'll take a look at the mowing deck. <laughs> okay, I'll try it without choke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Could use a better battery. <laughs> now it doesn't want to run at all, huh? Besides the fact that it didn't start real great, uh, that was pretty successful. All right, mowing deck. Let's see. 
Uh, it's the second one here. Obviously, that's a Husqvarna. We got our Craftsman deck, and then there's like an MTD, like a, or a Troy built pony, 42 incher there. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's take that out. We'll bring it into the shed and see how it's doing. So the belt engagement is seized and I even gave it a few whacks with a hammer and a crowbar and that's really on there it's not moving so we're gonna start taking this all apart it's gonna need to be serviced it's gonna be ground down and lubricated it's kind of a mess <laughs> washer goes flying Remember how this goes. That on top. Then there's a washer. And the pulley has this spacer that goes down on top of the washer. Then there's the washer that fell in the spindle that goes on top. And then the nut. Try to remember all that. side there's no washers that goes down oh there is a there's one washer on top the spacer goes the spacer side goes then a washer then a nut okay now she's moving yeah you can see how gross it is carriage bolt has to lock in there we go and that one drops out yeah, see how their carriage bolts so they lock into a groove which is nice yeah, just put this whole assembly back together so we can't really well we can screw it up but it'll be a little easier to not screw it up all right Obviously this spring has seen better days. It looks like it's about to snap. So we'll see what we can do about replacing that. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on there. Oh, all right, there's a washer. That washer goes down, your spring goes there, and then the spring anchors here. You can see a lot of crud has formed underneath. Which makes sense for a really old mowing deck, but uh, overall this is in pretty decent shape. It's not like it's any of the welds are cracked or anything like that. Like it's all pretty solid stuff. So it's definitely savable. Over on the other side, just to show you, um, this this brake mechanism needs a spring from that hole to this anchor point, and that would keep the brake on if the PTO blade engagement is disengaged you know once you engage the blades it comes off the spindle pulley like that but then when you 
disengage the blades, the brakes need to go back on. So both sides have brakes, which is great because sometimes these old decks, they don't have brakes on the, and the blades kind of keep passively spinning, which is not good. Um, but that, that happens a lot to people, common problem. But yeah, we do need to get another spring, a spring there and a spring there. We'll see what we have. Should be an easy enough one to find at a hardware store. Next, let's get the grass deflector off. These are half inch. Again, there's carriage bolts underneath. So with your finger, just kind of make sure they're sitting in a square groove. Pincher bug. Another pincher bug. So scared of those things when I was little. <laughs> I don't know if you have those bugs around where you are. I'm sure you do. All right, grass deflector is in great shape. Look at that. <laughs> that shouldn't be exciting, but it is. It makes the whole thing look a lot better when this is all painted. If that grass deflector was all chewed up, it wouldn't look very good. But with a nice new grass deflector. Put some finishing touches on the final product. Just makes the mower look a lot cleaner. Uh, let's see what's going on here. This is just not connected. This got all jacked up, probably hit something hard. But it's supposed to go in that center hole, but right now it's just, just horribly jammed into that portion of this roller. So, uh, yeah, let's probably just take it off. We gotta bend that. Okay, here's your 10 second sound warning. We're gonna make some loud noises here. I'm just gonna bend this back with this medium little sledge here. Um, see if I can get it out of the way of myself, but here we go. Let's see what that looks like. a little bit more adjusting, that'll be fine. Probably a pretty weird thing to watch me use the propane torch but it just helps to just dry out all the little nooks and crannies like back in there this is another spot with a lot of moisture that builds up and I'm gonna paint this thing so you know underneath here I don't want that to be wet at all so now this thing is like nice and toasty warm and dry I'm gonna scrape it down a little bit more with a wire brush then probably go over it with some degreaser Real quick, I might do the torch thing again, just to clean up any of that. I tried to get this guide off, but uh, that's stripped out, and I'm just going to leave it. And uh, I'll see if I can find the one that's supposed to go here, because I believe we should have one there too. But we don't, but we'll see what we can find. Alright, making some good progress on this deck. I'm sure you saw me get the blades off too, and we did the whole underside of that. Uh, it's in really awesome shape. Let me just show you quick. Look at the underside of this deck. It's like pristine. 
So yeah, we'll do a little primer on that. Get the blade sharpened. This thing's gonna look brand new. So I have a rotted out parts deck out back and you know, I took this off of it, but really this is just for this side. So I looked up some images online and the discharge side doesn't seem to have a belt cover like that. So uh, and we'll just save this for another project. Um, but I was able to rob the belt off of that scrapped deck and one spring. So that spring's going to go here. And we'll put it there. Um, let's see. So this is one of the blades from this deck. That one is good. But this one is very bent. And I don't have good luck straightening out blades. The metal just seems impossible to bend. But in my stash, I actually have the same exact red blade, same color, and a package. No idea where this came from. Someone might have given it to me. Whatever. But uh, that's the right replacement. So, yeah, we don't have two brand new blades. But, you know, this one is, is basically, look at it. It's basically brand new. Hardly any wear on it. Didn't hit any rocks. And this one, you know, I guess that little nick right there, that something banged that up pretty good. Maybe it was a root. But yeah, so we got some good parts here. All right, this is what we have for our primer for underneath the deck. It's Magic Brand Rust Kill Gray Primer. The cap says gray primer. The can doesn't, but the cap does. So we got our mask on. I should probably turn this fan off. <laughs> All right. There you go. Just going to give this just kind of a pretty light coat underneath. I'm going to try to stretch this can to uh, so I can prime most of the top as well. So we'll see. Perfect. coat of primer but I was able to stretch that one can for the underside and the top side yeah it's pretty good so we have some really cheap paint here for the black <laughs> uh, can't remember where I got this now this might be Walmart uh, either that or like a dollar store sometimes I'll go to dollar stores and get black paint because it's like five dollars, four ninety nine, something like that, instead of the eight or nine or fifteen dollars it is at other stores. So we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll give it a paint. So we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll give it a coat with that budget black. <laughs> this is gonna get painted black too, so that's why I didn't mind having that on. Plus, I can't get that screw out, so it's staying. But yeah, prime it, paint it black. It's all gonna get black. Even the spindles, I'll hit them black. The whole thing just covered in black paint. <laughs> All right, I'll come back in a minute. I'm trying to put everything back together here on the top side of the deck. I've tried to film this a couple times. This isn't easy. Getting the order of everything is uh, quite complicated. So you kind of have to get that going ahead of time so that's gonna sit in there like that <laughs> okay so then you have this whole pivot bracket and there's a washer underneath here you kind of see it there I got some grease on some things 
This is going to come up like that. That's going to go there. That's going to go on. Now the trick with this thing, which I found to be very interesting is, you know, obviously you want that to be tight, but if it's too tight, I'll show you, like even like that. Now I can't move it. If I loosen it up, now I can move it. But that nut is like not really on there. So I figured I'll put a lock nut on it. And I'll put another nut on top. And I'll do one of these. So I'll set the tension I want, or the really the, the tightness I want. I guess like there. And then I'll tighten down this top nut on top of it and not let the bottom one move. And now that won't back out. You know, that's sort of the idea there. So maybe I'll back that off just a little bit. stiff. I don't know why this is such a difficult thing to do. Well, that seems decent. But yeah, I really don't want it to like come apart, you know? That would be terrible. So I don't know if I'm like overthinking things here, but yeah, that's what I came up with. So this one seems to come together pretty easily. Maybe I'll show you here. You got this belt guide, then a washer, uh, spacer side down, washer, and a nut. Hopefully this is going to work out okay. Like I said, we'll definitely test it all and make sure it's moving and not coming loose and all that good stuff. So this is what I came up with with a spring. I had this just in my parts. So hopefully that uh so not to sort of, oh, it doesn't, doesn't really seem like it pulls it back. But I don't know how much the other one was doing either. I do like the way that feels though. That feels, it feels all solid. It feels like it's moving good. It just isn't instantly coming back which that might be a problem. We'll have to look into that. If it is, I'll have to back out on that nut. Um, but I think with some of the belt pressure and tension, you know, it's, it's hopefully it's default position is back here. Yeah. enamel clear coat kind of action here I don't know just for fun help seal up some of the paint maybe protect it from gasoline if gas spills on it ever just a thin little coat here this stuff goes on easy dries real quick if you have it, might as well just put on a thin layer. I mean, you could do multiple coats, but...
Just two quick laps. There. Nice. Don't mind the sledgehammer in the way there. It's just holding up the mowing deck so the bottom doesn't slip out on you. Just for you guys, so you get a view here. Okay, if you're trying to sell a tractor and you have one new blade and one used blade, both good, both sharp, freshly sharpened, what side do you put the new one on? Some of you know the answer because some of you sell machines. You put it on this side, the discharge side, because when a customer comes to lift up the discharge chute, the grass deflector, they look and they see a brand new blade. I would never put it over here because then they wouldn't see the new one. So that's the way we're going to do this. <laughs> Some of you are like, why would you do that? Well, why would you not do it? <laughs> Loud noises. I warned you. Alright everybody, the mowing deck is complete, deflector on, belt on, it's got springs, we got one new blade, both sharpened, primed, painted, clear coated. Hopefully that makes everybody happy. <laughs> tires, tires, tires. This video just feels like it's all about trying to find some tires that hold air for this craftsman, but yep, I'm removing those two fronts. And I found these, and they hold air overnight, so we're going to put those on. Got the tractor kind of crammed in the shed here. This is a project you'll eventually see. This thing's in my way, though. <laughs> this errands, I think it's going to be a cool video. A lot of diagnosis and work on this thing, and I'm waiting on a part, the side discharge cover so the thing's a mulcher because with the bag it won't bag the grass unless you plug the discharge right but uh that part is on hold from the vendor so yeah it's been about a month anyway that video's done besides that cover <laughs> that thing is in the way though but i think you'll enjoy that aaron's video when it comes out i'm hoping to finish this project today and uh, we got to get the tires sorted and the deck mounted. What's the other issue? Um, I have to find the brackets to mount the deck. I don't know where those are. So we got to do some hunting. You know, it is the very end of July. And I believe I took that deck off in September. So yeah, you guys know. I got to locate those parts. All right, let's get cracking here. Let's get some good tires on this machine. haven't been able to locate those front deck mounts um, it's a little messy back here a bit embarrassed nice mailbox right I'm thinking this might be a project guys full restoration of this little mini bike with a little Tecumseh engine on it I don't know if I'm equipped to do that we're in pretty rough shape but anyway all right, here's the parts deck that I'm stealing a lot of things from. So I just walked by it and noticed it has both of these. So yeah, that one's tucked down in there. So yeah, I think we'll steal that because I can't seem to find those for the deck that we are working on. But again, this thing is all rotted out. 
it's really bad very thin not really worth patching I don't think so I've been just using it for parts so yeah let's keep robbing it to make sure those are oriented correctly but we got them on and I was thinking about mounting the deck but this tractor is absolutely filthy and instead of mounting a clean mowing deck onto a dirty tractor I'm gonna drive this thing over to get power washed uh, I got a battery yesterday so we're gonna throw that in and then we'll drive it out there and we'll wake up my neighbors with the pressure washer <laughs> And then uh, then we'll mount the deck and then we'll at least have a clean tractor. We still got to do some service to the engine. Um, but yeah, front tires are on. This is really the only bad tire. The other one on the right is decent. Um, this one might need a tube, but we're going to see if we can get away with some fix a flat. I'll go buy that later and we'll just see how this all goes. But I'm hoping to wrap this up. Well, a couple of off-screen problems here after power washing the thing. So there's some chewed up wires on the coil. And this is one of these really interesting coils with like, I don't know, this magic box. There's a, like three wires coming off the coil. Anyhow, they're a little bit chewed up. They got wet. They might've been touching. We lost spark for a little bit. We got that sorted out. I dried it out. Um, then I came back in the shed and started to put the mowing deck on. Um, but I realized as I got down to the final step that the cable is snapped for this So here's the cable Here's the end that connects to that handle that I just moved and there's no cable coming out of it So in the middle of this sheathing The cable snapped so we got to go source one of those I'm gonna check down by the creek on a crap uh, A tractor down there. Uh, I think might have the same sort of setup um, Yeah so besides that, the deck went on pretty easy. We got these two front mounts worked out just great. Don't worry, we'll fix that too. Um, yeah, so eventually I'm gonna get this cover off and we're gonna clean up some of the wiring there. We'll do some shrink wrap, uh, make sure everything's good to go. But yeah, let's see if we can find that cable somewhere. So this is a slightly different style. Should be able to get to all that pretty easily yeah it's slightly different but i'm wondering if it might work so let's uh take it out it shouldn't take more than a minute or two yeah the tip it on its side but i got it out so i'm hoping this part works the rest of it should like that this plastic clip will go in but this i think is too big so i might need Need to make that hole smaller somehow do something weird but uh i think we might be able to get this to work so unfortunately this does not work i tried it out but i don't know if you can see right here that's where the end of the cable hooks up to and the cable that i'm supposed to have here has a little black clip that just clicks onto there um, it doesn't have necessarily that eye like that one does so I got that on order. He'll be here tomorrow, um, which, you know, I thought I could finish this maybe today, but uh, I do have some wiring things to tidy up. So I guess we'll deal with the engine today. Um, maybe still get to this tire today. And tomorrow can be all about that blade engagement cable. All right, so the first one I needed was this ground wire for the rectifier. But uh, this is what I'm talking about with the coil on this particular Kohler. There's a lot going on here. And it runs through this box, which probably like regulates the spark timing in some sort of complicated way that doesn't need to happen. But that's what they're doing. 
but this these yellow and black wires here are all chewed up and frayed so I'm gonna splice in some better connections here so I got those wires all cleaned up I added a whole new connection there spliced some things in soldered and shrink wrapped so that is a lot more secure this one too like I already showed you so I'm gonna blow some of this out because there's some crud in there so I'm gonna get a mask on some glasses turn on the air compressor and uh, get that all cleaned out too Well, I had to put in a new gas tank that that old one was leaking so the fuel line thing turned into a disaster but we got to sort it out all right let's uh see if we can straighten out this Found a really old can of puncture seal. I have no idea how that's working. I think I want to get it <clears throat> so the uh, valve stem is down. Let's try that again. Gonna send it, put it all in there, we'll see what happens. Oh, that, that valve stem is all messed up. Great. Them. And I was able to break the bead on that tire very easily. I just stomped on it. And then the valve stem actually went in easily. And I reset the bead easily. So at least the valve stem won't leak. Now we just got to see if this puncture seal from 1993 works. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But we'll find out really gonna drive this thing around but I just did a little bit of touch-up paint on the deck and I don't want to drive it right now because grass is gonna get on that wet paint so gotta wait a little bit at least I know the puncture seals in there I just fill it up with air drive it around see if it'll seal in the cracks well it's the next day and this thing is uh, holding up pretty good I did add a little ATF to that tire too uh, that one probably needs some ATF. That one's good. So, the blade engagement cable came in. Amazon brought it. So, let's get this thing installed. Hopefully it won't take too long. Alright, it works. The cable was the right cable. And the blades engage. When you disengage, the brake turns on. The blade stops spinning. I think it's fully functional now.
While the finished condition of this tractor is not how I normally sell my tractors, but I'm gonna leave this one as a beater, okay? It's a 2004. I'm not really gonna be able to get it to sell for too much money, so why put too much effort into it? So I think I got everything up and running the way I'd like to have it. It operates perfectly, it mows. Transmission's good, engine's good, mowing deck's good. Um, I think we have a nice little tractor here. So I'm gonna call this one a beater because I'm not gonna paint everything on it. I'm not even gonna polish her up the way I normally do. I just hosed it down and I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'm gonna take its photos for Facebook Marketplace. I think it's also good for you guys to see how and why I do things the way I do on this channel. Again, I'm not one of those channels where I'm restoring a piece of machinery to its best condition or even my best ability. Um, I'm flipping tractors for profit. I mean, that's really what I'm doing here. So something like this, it's just not worth the effort to do a whole bunch of different things to it, especially when it comes to cosmetics. Now, I'm not even gonna change the oil on this tractor and that might bother some of you, but again, oil's expensive and this is what I'm doing. The oil's good on this. It's to the perfect level, it's nice and clean and I'm just not gonna bother with it. There's no real point. So people who flip tractors, you know what I mean. You save on costs wherever you can. And as long as things are up and running and working order up to my standard, then I'm good with it. So yeah, this one's gonna be, like I said, a beater tractor. And I think the 2004 LT1000 is kind of that. This thing has been around for 20 years. Uh, these tractors are still on the market, still being sold every day, still being used every day, and they're still kicking. You gotta hand it to them. I think they found a sweet spot back here in the late 90s and the early 2000s with these LT1000s. They're not bad machines, and uh, I think it's gonna make someone a pretty nice mower. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been an interesting project, especially since it took all the way back from September to finish it out. Um, but I'm glad that we have a mid to late summer tractor ready for sale and hopefully keeping the price down will actually help it sell. Because again, if you do this sort of thing, you know, around this time of year, things stop selling. So you gotta get some budget items out there. I gotta start working on some push mowers too, because people might wanna buy those now. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kyle. The channel is called Kyle by the Creek. Please like and subscribe. That's going to help me out. And if you feel like it, check out my second channel, Kyle by the Lake. If you like cabins and off-roading and Adirondack property, Kyle by the Lake is another channel that I started. Thanks, everyone. Catch you on the next one.